Okay, when I was writing a video about the Drake Equation, I came very close to stumbling down a wiki hole about interesting ideas on probability. I stopped myself quite quickly, but not before I found this. This is interesting and I want to talk about it. So what is the Lincoln Index? Let's say you send off an expedition to record the number of different types of animal in a particular area. We'll say the number of species of spiders in some as yet unexplored area of rainforest. The expedition finds some number of species and makes their recording. It's very unlikely that they've found all of them, but they've found some of them. So now we send a second mission. They also record the species they observe. They find some new, they find some the first team saw, they also miss some that the first team saw. What you want to be able to do, what would be very useful, is to take two data sets of that same population and understand a rough idea of how large the population is. In this case, can you get from those two expeditions to an estimate of the number of species of spiders in that area? And the way it works is this. Let's say group 1 found 40 species and group 2 found 30. If, say, 29 of the 30 that group 2 found were also found by group 1, you'd say it's very likely we found most of the species. But if, say, with those species discovered, we'd only found three in common, then you have to say that means it's likely there's far more undiscovered species. You can think about it like this. What's the third expedition likely to do? Are they likely to keep finding more of the same ones, or are they going to stumble off and find loads that haven't been discovered yet? So taking those first two expeditions, how do we make a number for this? The Lincoln Index is simply the number of species in each sample multiplied together, divided by the amount in common. So in my example, the first case, with 29 of the 30 found by the first group, would have an index of 43, rounded. The second would have an index of 400. These are rough numbers, by the way. You must be careful of commonality if you're looking at different species. So, going back to the first case, it could be that both research groups found an enormous amount of the same species because they found the common ones, but missed a lot of rare ones, so the index might underestimate. But as a rule of thumb, a high Lincoln index would mean a large population. What I found more interesting, going away from the basics of the idea, is how it came about. So the idea was described by the American ornithologist, Frederick Charles Lincoln. And I read up on his work, which was calculating waterfowl abundance on the basis of banding returns. So let me explain why this is important. His paper was made because of the desire to work out the effects of hunting on waterfowl, i.e. birds such as ducks and geese, which were and still are popular for hunting. The big question was, as he put it, it is a major problem to determine whether the annual kill represents the surplus, after deducting the losses from disease, natural enemies and other causes, or whether hunters are also cutting into the breeding stock necessary for the perpetuation of these valuable and necessary species. In other words, a very important problem. The question of whether hunting of wildfowl done then was sustainable, or whether they were going to deplete their stock. To do this, he needed a way to estimate the fluctuations in the abundance of wildfowl, and this is how he did it. He first set out to ban many wild wildfowl, put something identifiable on them. This is in effect similar to the first survey in the example I gave before. The next hunting season, he worked out the number of returns, i.e. how many banded fowl were shot, and tracked the percentage of those that were shot. His postulation was that the percentage of banded fowl shot to total banded fowl should be as the percentage of total fowl shot to total fowl i.e. if he got a reliable figure for the total number of birds shot, he could estimate the total number of birds. If you think of it mathematically, birds over birds shot is roughly equal to banded birds over banded birds shot. You know three of these terms, you can now work out the number of birds. This is in effect doing the two samples of the Lincoln Index in a very clever way, the first one being banding, the second sample being made by the hunters. And it's very obvious which birds are common to both samples. They're the ones that have been banded. 
By working with many stations across the United States, he was able to make a good estimate over the course of many years. What's nice though is he points out the limitations of the data set, but also points out that while no doubt many banded ducks would be killed and unaccounted, so would many non banded ducks, so the errors are likely to act against each other. And that is a brief overview of the Lincoln Index. It's a very clever idea. However, unfortunately for me, I fell down the same wiki hole I narrowly dragged myself up from before. So you can probably expect another few videos on this sort of thing.